today on 2D's Track Analysis, we have the track of the day for February 7th, Revel by GMO Meso. Revel is a mixed surface track made from these surfaces, road, plastic, grass, dirt, and there are also magnet blocks. The track contains both a risky and non-risky finish, with the risky finish needing about 250 minimum speed to reach. You can reach the risky finish with a standing respawn at the final checkpoint, and I would recommend this over the safe finish, as taking the safe finish in this scenario will cost you an additional second. Overall, I thought the track was fairly easy to complete and would rate it 3 out of 10 for difficulty. I completed the track with a time of 53.331, which was about 0.15 ahead of the 53.481 author medal time. Outside of a very few minor things on the track, I thought it drove and played extremely well, and on the plus minus rating scale, I would give Revel a triple plus rating. For today's analysis and comparison, we're using the current world record Ghost, driven by Don Rye, and they had a 52.388, and this is .943 ahead of my personal best. Right away at the start here, we'll be hit with this jump, in which you want to be about a car width away from the corner, and on about a 45 degree angle toward the plastic ramp. Once you're on the plastic, try not to steer too much. And then for the next jump, you want to be pretty shallow on this as well. You don't want to be steering too high up to the right, otherwise you'll get a ton of air time. You also don't want to be very low here because if you are very low, you will hit this little lip on the grass section, get a bounce and lose a lot of speed. I'll get a little bit more air time here than the world record, which will set me up late for this turn. And I'll be high on the outside while the world record is closer to an inside line. Of course, that little extra air time also costs me a little bit of speed, but really here it's more so the line that gives the world record a better time through this section. That leads us into this next jump where you can go onto this magnet. I do want to point out that you can overjump this magnet if you have too much speed. If you do feel like you're about to overjump it, just release gas and then press it immediately again. Do it as fast as possible. It should reduce your air time just a fraction and you should grab the magnet. This takes us to this dirt turn here, which you can set up middle to wide, so you can get a nice line through the apex of the turn. On the exit of the turn, I'll keep holding right to remain on an inside line, while the world record releases to go straight and get a better outside line here. This outside line might be a little bit better because you can speed slide on the grass a little bit longer, but overall I don't think there's a huge difference between these two different lines. Moving on though into this next left hand turn, we'll see the world record take a better inside line than I do and that'll put them a little bit further ahead yet again. You want to be pretty aggressive turning into this turn, however right here you'll see that I release on the left hand turn that'll allow my car to straighten out and stop this slide. This brings us into probably one of the more difficult turns in the track if you're going for a perfect line. Here you want to start turning on the dirt very, very early to get around this pillar. Then moving up, you'll see you want to initiate a drift here very early, and you need to make sure you initiate this drift while you have the double skid marks. If you have these skid marks, but it's just on a single line, you won't be able to initiate the drift until you straighten your car out, get rid of the skid marks, and then you can initiate a drift. The world record also starts with a much higher line, which will result in a better line through the turn and for the exit. Moving up a little bit as well, we'll see that I bonk this wall, which isn't the biggest deal. It is made of plastic, so don't be super afraid to hit this wall. It will cost a small speed loss, but it's really not too bad. After this jump, you want to set up very, very wide here, about as wide as you could possibly get for this next turn. Even during the turn here, you'll see me break so I can even get even tighter on the exit. I don't think you really want to break here, but today in the moment, I thought it was the best option. Even with the braking, we'll end up on a similar pace here through this dirt section. However, afterwards and through the turn, they'll be able to speed slide this dirt here. They take that higher line as well, which I honestly don't think is the correct line. I think you want to be down to the left. The biggest difference was really the speed slide, which I really didn't do that great. If you do get that lower line and the speed slide, you will end up on a similar line to where I am here, a wider entrance to this upcoming checkpoint. This wider entrance is better than what the current world record is on because they have to turn very hard off this dirt in order to make this turn and they will lose quite a bit of speed. And we'll see you the reason why I think this is a better line because as I unpause here, we'll see the world record pace is actually slower than mine through this section and I will pass the world record into the finish.
Also for the finish again you need a minimum of 250 speed and you can make this with a standing respawn and I suggest you take this with a standing respawn instead of the safe finish as the safe finish with a standing respawn will cost you an additional second. For the final thoughts today, again, just a very, very nice track here today. Can be a bit frustrating at times, though, trying to hunt those perfect lines. Uh, but overall, the track was fairly easy to complete for uh, just about anybody. The few minor complaints I had about today's track, at the very start, you have the transition from that jump to the grass piece that has the small lip. You know, not a huge deal, but uh, a little bit annoying at times, as well as over jumping the magnets, but you can release gas to, uh, you know, shorten your airtime to help that out a little bit. But again, it, it was a little bit annoying to over jump that sometimes. That'll conclude today's analysis though, I hope you enjoyed, if you did, be sure to like the video and subscribe, check the description for links to my Twitch and Discord if you're interested in those, and be sure to check out all the other track analysis videos out on the channel already. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next track analysis.